Hello, welcome to another week of Coach's Notes. Um, so I'm kind of changing the style of how I'm putting things into Wattify. I'm not gonna keep writing stimulus and all that stuff. Um, it takes a lot of time for me to do that, to type it all in there. So I'm just gonna tell you what the stimulus is. And as a coach, it'll be your job to get people to do these workouts based on the intended stimulus. So let's start the week. Monday, push press cycle. We're on to the next phase. We're not gonna do tempo push press anymore. We're just gonna do push presses in three sets of 10 at 50 to 70%. So we're just looking for that nice dip and drive, no re-dip, arms straight overhead. Looking for heavier-ish four reps, push presses to work on that stamina and that cycling. So that's that, and then we're gonna do tall jerks with just the bar. And do three reps of five. Essentially what that is, is you're gonna take the bar or bell, put it on top of your head, not like rest it, cause it's gonna hurt, but hold it on top of your head, up on your toes, and then you're gonna split and stand back up. So essentially it's taking out part of that jerk and we're working just the drop under. So we're taking out the press. We're just working on the drop. So put it right on top of my head, toes, and then split. Ideally they wouldn't go toes, drop, and then jump. We go straight from toes, drop. Cool, that's that workout. Or the press cycle for Monday. Workout for Monday is called Twizzlers. We're gonna do 30 cleans. It can be squat or power, I don't care. Into 30 snatches, it can be squat or power, I don't care. But every time they put the barbell down, they have to do 10 mountain climbers. In 10, I mean like two feet counts as one. So if I go right leg, left leg, that's one mountain climber. Right leg, left leg, that's two mountain climbers. Right leg, left leg, that's three mountain climbers. So essentially it's a penalty for putting the bar down, seeing how far you can really push yourself to stay unbroken, work that grip, work that barbell cycling, work that muscular endurance. Tuesday is going to be our kind of work rest workout. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do wall balls, toast to bar, calorie row, and burpees in different orders. So it's all 12 reps. We're doing four rounds, but they all have different order of the movements. So my first one is 12 wall balls, 12 toast to bar, 12 calorie row, 12 burpees, and then I rest 90 seconds. Then I do 12 toes to bar, 12 burpees, 12 wall balls, 12 calorie row. So it kind of fluctuates in there. So it's not only like a mental challenge, but it's also a physical challenge because I'm not doing the same thing over and over. It's just testing that variance and that, that kind of mental and physical ability to ebb and flow with rounds as they go. So we're doing 12 reps of each. Um, you're doing four rounds. So it's like literally one round of 12, 12, 12, 12, and then they just rotate through. Um, so scaling options for that one, Obviously, four rounds of a workout with 12 reps really isn't something we'd probably scale anything. So if somebody needs to scale something, I would like them to do hanging knee raises and no other version unless they're not physically able to hang on the bar. Even if they hang on the bar and their knees only come up like this much, like if they bring their knees to here and not even here, so if they're doing hanging knee raises and their knees come to here, I, I'm good with that. I just want people to hang from the bar this week. Um, wall balls, obviously they can drop the weight or drop the height of the wall ball. And the row, if we need to, we can go down to eight calories. So this one will be a mental challenge for a lot of people. And within that 90 seconds, they're gonna need reminders of what I'm doing next because it's not a turn it off and go. But it should be an interesting workout for people. Wednesday, we're gonna do another choose your own adventure EMOM. Within that, there are some movements we probably haven't done before. Um, so barbell or dumbbell upright row. What's that look like? Look like, oh my gosh. Um, is standing nice and tall. Hands probably like a thumbs width away from the hips, pulling nice and high to like nipple line or sternum, somewhere in there. It doesn't have to come all the way up to the collarbone or the chin, but nice kind of high pull to here. You can do that with two sets of dumbbells or with the barbell, whatever weight they choose. Then we have parallel push-ups. So literally just doing push-ups on the parallettes. Um, your chest doesn't have to touch the floor. Um, or I guess you could do push-ups off of a dumbbell, either way. Um, but we're just looking for a little bit, to sink a little bit deeper in that push-up, almost like a muscle-up catch or a dip. And when we do that push-up, chest doesn't have to go all the way to the floor, just get deep into that push-up. Then we have kettlebell pullovers. So I'm gonna move my camera. So what that's gonna look like is they're gonna use a wall ball and a kettlebell, because a kettlebell is easier to reach than this dumbbell, but I do not have a light kettlebell. So I need a dumbbell. Essentially what we're looking for is 
just an isolated pullover movement. So arms back, and then it's coming up and over. So really working those, those lats. So if people struggle with pull-ups, that would be a good recommendation for them to do. Jumping lunges, weighted sit-ups. They can do weighted sit-ups with a plate or a dumbbell across their chest and sit up to it. Put on a weight vest and do sit-ups. L-sits, they can be hanging or on the parallettes or just off the floor or off anything that they can push up from or hang from. Uh, farmer hold, so don't have to walk with the farmer carry, just hold them so really heavy, so most people should be picking up those 70s. Um, sandbag or plate hug, and then sandbag or plate squats. So there are some sandbags at the gym. People could bring their own sandbag if they felt like it. Any odd object, really, that they want to hold, they want to grab one of the atlas stones out of the back, if they want to pick up and hold, a child, I don't know, anything that's an odd object or a plate that they can pick up and just kind of hug and bear hug and hold for 30 seconds. So they're doing plates. Um, obviously 45 is the heaviest plate we have. So if they want to bear hug 45 pounds, that's fine. If they want to make it heavier, they can do two plates or three plates. Um, I've done that before and I've just used a band to kind of strap them together. So if you put a band through the center holes and then kind of loop it like you would loop it around a pull-up bar and then kind of wrap it around and then loop it again. It kind of keeps them together a little bit. They can do that. And then squats with the sandbag or the plates, just doing like goblet squats, bear hug squats. And then handstand holds. So those are all the options for Wednesday's Chewing Your Own Adventure EMOM. Thursday, we're doing deadlifts. Um, this week, we're skipping from tempo and going to um, some banded deadlifts. So let me show you how those can be set up. So there are a couple of options for banded deadlifts. I'm sure some of you have done them before. Um, the easiest option to get into and out of that puts the less, least amount of stress on the band is to take the band and put it under the two ends under your feet and the middle over the barbell. So essentially the barbell, the middle of the band goes over the barbell, the end loops go under your feet And then as I deadlift, the band gets heavier, so the weight gets heavier as I stand up. So it's probably the easiest to get into and out of. You just lay the band across the bar and then put your feet in the ends. Another way to do it is to take the band. I don't know if it'll work since I don't have plates on the bar. Um, but essentially you put both ends over the bar. And then you stand in the middle. So again, under my feet. And then I've got the band ends over the bar. It's also an option. Third option would be to put the, since I don't have plates, it's not gonna work for me, but you put the ends in between the first and the second plate. So you're still standing in the middle, but it stretches this a little more because it's not right under your feet and on the bar. That's another option. Um, so that's how you're going to set up for those deadlifts. And then we're going to partner wide with DT. Whew, sorry. So it's five rounds of 12, <coughs> 12 deadlifts, nine hang power cleans, six shoulder to overhead. So they can split that up how they like. They want to split the numbers evenly. They want to go, you go around, I go around, you go around, I go around. We split the last round. That's fine. However they want to split that work up, they can. That workout with a partner should take five to eight minutes at max. So have them scale weight accordingly to where it won't take them longer than eight minutes. Um, Friday, we have a workout of three rounds per time, 600 meter row, and then you're doing several, several, seven single arm devil press with your right, seven single arm thrusters with your right, seven single arm devil press with your left, seven dumbbell thrusters with your left. So there are RX plus, RX, and scaling options in there. Essentially, just bring the dumbbell weight down. Um, if someone doesn't want to use a dumbbell at all, they can substitute for seven burpees, seven air squats, seven burpees, seven air squats. Um, for that one, I don't really know how long that's going to take anybody. 600 meter row would take most people somewhere between two and three minutes. So if we say three minutes at max, you're already looking at a nine minute workout with just the rowing. Then with the essentially 14 thrusters and 14 double press, probably add another four minutes on that. So we're looking at seven minutes around. So we're looking at about a 20, 21 minute workout. This will be probably one of the, 
this will probably be one of the longest workouts without rest that we've done. Um, so that'll be a nice workout, I think, for people just to get a little longer to work out in. Um, I don't have time caps this week. The only thing I would like you to time cap is that DT on Thursday, eight minutes, no more max, um, just because that workout should be fast and furious and it's not a weightlifting technique workout. It's more of a like get the work done workout, especially with a partner. Um, I can do DT by myself at RX weight in probably, I think the last time I did it was like five and a half minutes. So if I can do it by myself in five and a half minutes at RX weight, most people in the gym should be able to do it with a partner in about six to seven minutes. So no more than eight on that DT. Saturday is the 3rd of July. So if we have if we have gym that day, I think we should do the 1776 wad. It's a list of about 10 to 15 movements, teams of three to four, and you complete 1,776 reps as a team. In any combination of those movements, you should have to do one rep of each at least. Um, so it's got things like box jumps, kettlebell swings, air squats, push up, burpee, pull up, toes to bar, sit ups, double unders, wall balls, slam balls, and lunge steps. So each lunge would count as one, each kettlebell swing would count as one. So if you, each, if you do a team of four and each partner does 25 kettlebell swings, it's already 100 reps, and then you just kind of keep going. It does take a long time, so that one probably wouldn't have much of a warm up. Maybe do some circles, jog down and back, and then be like, all right, let's go, let's do this workout. If you are coaching the third, if we have class the third and you do not want to do that workout, please let me know. We'll figure out something else. Um, or if we plan to not be open on the 5th and just have a workout on the 5th that is just 4th of July, we'll switch 1776 to that day. Um, but if we don't have a workout on the 5th, I need to know because that means our press cycle is going to be messed up and I need to shift things. Um, so yeah, that's next week. Um, like I said, I'm not going to put stimulus, purpose, goals, all that kind of stuff in the workouts and modify anymore. Um, I'm just going to start saying them in these videos or in coaches notes or um, in the warm-up email and so just kind of let people know as you're coaching hey the reason we're doing this workout today like on monday is we're trying to work on barbell cycling and how long can you hold on before you have to put that barbell down so you have a penalty every time you put the barbell down for tuesday it's a variance workout can you mentally hang on and mentally remember everything you're supposed to do can you do these in different random orders as we go wednesday it's an imam work on things you're bad at work on things you're good at pick what you want to do Thursday, DT, move fast in a partner workout, get that barbell going. Friday, a long sustained aerobic workout, looking for more of a hang on, looking for a less than a red line pace. DT should be more of a red line pace. It's like, oh my God, I'm breathing hard. I don't know if I can beat the barbell back up. This should be, Friday should be more of a slower pace, a little bit of longer workout, a little bit more of pace right under that red line. Can I hang on for 20, 25 minutes? Um, so yeah, so I'm excited. The next two weeks should be really good.